Hey everyone, Pat the Sound Guy here. I've got a uh, LS916 from Yamaha here in front of me. Uh, this has been a wonderful console and he's got uh, a lot of hours on him, near 4,000 hours to be exact. And this guy, he uh, had a bad fader a while back. The master fader was uh, totally, totally, totally toast. And it was uh, a real drag. I had to go through a gig or two for a weekend uh, Without my master fader, I had to use the set of aux sends to uh, run master sends. Yeah, it was a little bit tricky, I got through it. Anyway, so I had to uh, replace one fader. Well, unfortunately I didn't videotape the whole thing. So, now I'm going to videotape the whole thing for you while I have to replace the entire bank of faders. But I will show you how to replace just one fader if you so desire. Because one fader is very cheap to replace. Uh, I think it was about $35 Canadian which is, but I don't know, a dollar or two uh, American now with the exchange. Yeah, just kidding. So anyway, I'll uh, start by uh, showing you how this comes apart. First of all, the main thing you want to remember before you start any work on a Yamaha LS9 or a very similar console is they all usually have a backup function. Now, please, 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 please make sure you use the backup function. Because what happens if you decide to replace something and you turn it on and it decides to reset itself back to the factory settings? That'd be kind of a drag. You go to your next gig and go, uh oh, where's all my settings that I spent so many hours uh, getting into? So, first of all, we want to start by backing up the console. Most of you probably know how to do this already. All right. Make a name for this. Yes, 2015, how's that? Save. So now we're backing up the entire console. Done. Now, which the actual light goes out. USB stick out. Okay, now, next. Turn off the console. Next step, unplug the console. Very important. You don't want to be messing around with any electronic equipment. Well, it's still far up to the mains unless you're, you know, a very uh, skilled electronics technician. You're troubleshooting and you need to have something powered up under load to uh, test it. So snap the fire that. Now, there are very many screws to take this guy apart, but it's not that hard. I thought it was going to be something that would be really difficult, and of course, you know, disassembled many things of this nature in my, you know, almost 19, near 19 years, near 20 years of uh, doing audio, and uh, so it's pretty simple. You've got four screws for this side rail, four screws for this side rail, three screw, four screws at the back here, and four screws at the front. And under the two rails, there's four more screws on this side, and four more screws on this side. Now, this makes it real simple. We get Mr. Trusty DeWalt here. Uh, I prefer the little small impacts for this kind of job. It makes it, it seems a lot quicker. Now, if you're going to replace one fader, we have to unsolder it from the fader bank, which is not all that difficult. All the screws required to do that are 67 screws. So make sure you keep all your screws straight. I don't want to be losing any of those. There's four. Oh, 
I'm gonna wait for this one, don't I? I'll wait for this one. Uh, let's see. Here it is. And down here. Okay. Oh, four more screws there. Good portion of the way there. Another four on each side. This procedure also applies for replacing the screen as well, which I had to do on this console last uh, this past year. My own stupid fault. I had to get I was on a gig or a very lot. Next to a window that opened inward. I left the window open and the window fell open. I the screen and smashed it. I only had half the screen. Thank goodness I used the uh, wireless control. Because it would have been a real huge drag. Because uh, I could do a lot of functions in the console because I knew I could because I already see some of the pixels at the bottom of the screen. So knowing it the console as well as it do wasn't too bad up the creek, full of excrement, but it could have been a real huge problem. Oh, three screws on the back. Three screws, not four. Sorry about that. Not for one screw. There was a one screw here, matter, eh? Alrighty, now. There's our uh, whole top of our console. Now, I want to be very careful of looking this up. In the service manual for this guy, it actually shows a tool that you're supposed to have to work on this guy to do this. And what it is, it's a prop rod, basically, just like opening the hood in your car. Now, if you can see that very well or not, maybe I'll just spin this console around a little bit so you can see the the innards there. I'll just uh, spin this guy around. Okay. Open like the hood. Now, in here it looks pretty complicated, but it's uh, actually fairly simple. You disconnect a few cables. It's very hard to screw up. Be very, very careful when you uh, pull on cables. Get them as close to this plastic as you can, and pull on the plastic housing if you can. It's the best way to do it, so you don't tear anything out of it. Connector itself. The best thing to do, I would suggest, is take a digital camera and take a good picture of everything before you start pulling cables out. The little ribbon cables are uh, fairly simple as well. One there, one here, and that should about do it. Bingo! Now, I'll just set this aside for a moment and I'll uh, Restart the video when I get uh, ready to uh, pop those in. Alrighty then. So, uh, where we left off is I just had to uh, plop this whole top of the console back on the bench. And now, if you notice, this ribbon cable just pops out of here. Oops. I'm gonna pull this little fella out of here. A little squeezy clip at the bottom. There we go. Easy peasy, baby. Piece of cake, though. Pop that out of the way. This ribbon cable comes out of there. And got a little power wire here. And if I remember correctly. The outside of these little white guys here, hold these ribbon cables in. They just the sides, shoulders slide up to release the cable. 
And that little set of cables just pops right out. Here. Want to be careful you don't uh, mess it up too badly here. There it goes, that one goes. We're very careful not to bend those pins too much, the wires in the end of those. Sometimes you need to push them up and push them down a couple times just to get them to release properly. All right, managed to pull that out of there. I want to take another minute or so. Didn't want to bore you with me sitting there yanking and pulling and messing around with that. Now, very simple. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws, and the whole bank of faders comes right back out. Okay, let's see if we can get the little screws out. One. Oh. A little more magnetized. So, something a little more magnetized to pull it out of there with. That should pull that out of there. That pulls that out of there. Now let's try that. Mm -hmm. So, ready to pop out. Now, flip this guy over. And pop all the fader knobs off. Now, that's a lot of fader knobs. Be real fun on a 32, but we're doing really quick here because this is. Uh, I don't think we've been here more than 10 minutes. I think. Now, these faders are known. The original faders, especially, are known for being uh, a problem in these consoles, and a. Uh, the local production company where I got this fader bag from, known them for quite a long time, 
and he replaced every single figure. I mean, every single one of his LS9 16s and 32s, because they were all oh, going to be a problem down the road. And they had calibration issues and that sort of thing. So there we go. That's a uh, set of bathers with near 4,000 hours on them. One new fader there. Okay, so let's uh, look at the new faders here. There's the new faders. As you can see they've got these nice uh, gaskets to keep everything from uh, dirt and corruption from getting in there to make these things not be happy. And the original faders that come from the factory did not have those. It was kind of an oversight, I think. But I mean, you think about it, 4,000 hours over the course of, uh, you know, so many years, only having one fader fail, that's pretty darn good. Although the faders I did have in the original console, none of them will calibrate properly. Now, if you want to replace one fader on this board, it's, uh, there's a few more screws you have to undo here. Now, if you look at this uh, bank of faders, this board here, you have to take out each screw on each fader. So, of course, there is 37 screws to remove here for these two, ra these two rails. And beyond that, there's a couple of solder joints you got to work on. So you got to desolder this T here is one of the back sides of one of the, one of the rails. And this guy over here, you gotta un desolder both of those with your solder sucker tool. Very handy. And then beyond that, you have to desolder each for each trader you want to replace, you have to do these four pins, those two pins here. So four and two and two. So simple desolder on those. Be very, very careful because uh, if you're a little too much heat for too long, you can damage that board. But if you're quick with it and you got a good hot soldering iron, you'll be able to pull that fader right off, new fader in, new solder, bang, you're done. Put the two rails back in, resolder these two uh, tangs back in where they come from, put back those 37 screws, and you have a fader bank with replaced faders. Now, this is the easy way to do it. A little more expensive, but then you have every single fader ready to go. And this is what we uh, decided to do for this particular console, was to replace the entire fader bank. And uh, off we go. So now it's just reverse of how it went in. Piece O cake O. Okay. Now. Make sure those are lined up. And away we go again. Make sure we have screws hiding down inside here. And we start to reassemble. Now the best way to do this is uh, put all your screws in first and uh, get them in place. Maybe the regular screwdriver would be a good idea. And this will be a little tricky. You don't want to cross thread them again. Return them to their rightful locations. Magnetized screwdriver makes a big difference putting these back in. Still lined up, and of course we drop the screw. Okay. Okay, Mr. Screw. Mr. Screw, Mr. Screw, Mr. Screw. Try 
Yeah. Not just a dope ring, I'm lost in the screw. We'll find out. We will find out. I don't drop any more screws in there. Yeah, better screwdriver. Better screwdriver. That's the best way to do it is by hand, of course. We don't want to strip anything out. And we'll replace all these screws. And I get all the replaced, but put it back in. I will be uh, doing the video. I don't want to bore you with all this. And we'll be back in a second here with me finish this off. Alrighty. Now, so we've got all these screws back in those 10. Now we've got this uh, ribbon cable to pop back in here. It's pretty obvious where this one goes to. So lift the shoulders of the connector back up. Slide them in gently, make sure none of the pins are bent. And they're all in their holes. Push the shoulders back down the connect connector. And that goes back in too. Make sure they're down all the way in there. Slight little tug to make sure that they're, they're in there proper. Put this little clip back over. And this guy here. Make that clip a little simpler. Everybody goes back in their little holes properly. It's a little cable party here. And then a clip. So we've got it here. We want to swap some clips over, I believe, from the other guy. From the original. Okay. No clips to swap over. This little guy here. Piece of cake. Ta -da! All right. We'll come back when we uh, get the base of the console back on the bench and continue from there. All right. So we had the console back, uh, made it up with its. Uh, top cover. So we'll put all these other cables back in. Now this would be a great time while you've got it open to, uh, if you've got a lot of hours on your console, replace this little uh, 2032 uh, memory battery there would be a good idea because you never know. Again, make sure to replace that and make sure everything's backed up. be a good idea. And uh, off we go. We'll replace a few cables here. So this little guy goes back in this hole here. Yeah. Trick is to be real careful there, holding with one hand and putting the cable with the other. Could use like a paint stir stick or a little block of wood to hold this open, but I prefer just to hold on with one hand or have a helper hold it. But of course, I never end up having a helper at the right time, so I just uh, usually do this by myself. A little tricky, it's got to be. Keep your fingers broadside on the cable. Make sure it slides in there gently. This little guy goes in here. And I believe you can only go one way with these because they've got little tangs on them, so it only goes one direction. The same thing with this one. Everything's got little tabs and tangs on it, so make sure it goes in one way. This little guy, also the same. Here. Okay. Now, gently, gently put this cover back. On. 
Take a little bit of finagle. Gently, 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 gently. There we goes. There we goes. Ta da! Again, piece of cake go. Spin her around here. Alrighty then. So we've got uh, the console on and powered up. We've got a few of the uh, fader knobs back on, which I'm actually going to pull back off in a little bit. And I'm going to uh, give them all a good clean because they're all a little grungy. You stick those in a in a bucket and give them a good sh give them a good wash and put them back on. It looks looks a lot better when you looks a nice professional looking gig. Your gears all nice and clean. Anyway, this uh, this console for actually quite a few years lately. Uh, my first fader here, it was out of calibration. Wouldn't calibrate in the calibrate function at all. And so when you put it at unity, the zero mark, it wouldn't show zero on the screen. Well now, it shows pretty much zero when I put it to zero, which is great. So now you know when you're mixing wirelessly, you look at the screen, you look at the number, Oh, it's Unity. You go back to the console. Oh, geez. It's only minus five. Geez, you know, that I had I had a Unity. Geez, you know, you sometimes you forget. And you put it back in Unity and also your kitchen. Why am I my bass drum so loud? And then you kind of realize, oh wait a minute. I have to use my brain for a minute here. So anyway, everything seems happy. All the faders are working. Master faders working. These feel a lot better than the old worn out. 4,000 hour guys with the scratchy old feel and all the junk stuck in them and that kind of thing. So now we want to reassemble everything. So, great thing about this uh, reassembly process is all the screws for the outside part of this, aside from the side plastic rails, are all the same. So as long as you get them all back in again, you're pretty much good to go. So like I said, the front four screws, and I am using the impact for this, but if you're uh, scared you're going to strip something, you're not really great with one of these uh, screw guns, I recommend uh, doing it by hand. Or maybe if you're doing pretty good to get them in, you know, feel free to do with the with the impact. What I tend to do sometimes is uh, do everything with the uh, impact and not snug it all the way down and not tighten it up. So don't go to town making it clack a few times every time you put a screw in. Put it in until it stops. And then go around your screwdriver and uh, do the final or contention with your hand screwdriver. That's probably your best bet. Anyway, I won't bore you with the uh, putting all the screws back in. As you can see, everything's functional, everything's happy, everything works. And this uh, could save you a lot of money if you have to replace some faders because, you know, shop time can be expensive. Even though sometimes it is the uh, best plan to take something into a professional to have something done. If you're uh, pretty good with things like this, this can be done. And uh, it, uh, it's pretty simple, doesn't take too long. I don't think this look, took more than 20 minutes, half an hour all said and done from start to finish. And uh, it's great to have new faders put in these. Everything's gonna calibrate properly. It's not gonna fail. It's not gonna do strange things when you move the fader. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, hope it helps save you time and some money down the road. And uh, it makes life a lot easier when you don't have to drop something off at the shop for a week and wait for it. 
especially when you're you're doing gigs every other night or you know a couple hundred nights of gear and you just don't have the time to drop something off and put it in a commission for any period of time. So if you like this video, uh, please uh, give a thumbs up and uh, maybe leave a comment or two and uh, make sure you subscribe if you like this. Uh, hopefully I'll have some more videos up soon for you. I've been trying to get some footage here uh, over the past few weeks and uh, hopefully to get some more videos up soon. So again, thumbs up, rate, comment, subscribe. Make sure to keep your keep between the ditches and keep rubber side down. Pat the sound guy signing off.